Hello, it's Melinda from Alexis and Melinda's Art Space and tonight or today or this morning, whenever you're watching this video, um, for me it's night, um, coming to you with a video. Yes, a video. I'm very sleep deprived today. Miss Alexis kept me up to the wee hours in the morning. So I found some paper clay in my stash and it needs to be used up, it needs to be made into things because it is um, very old, it's probably about four years old. It was still in a sealed zip bag but parts of it have got air to it and I had to throw a little bit of it away. So I thought what a fun way to use it up. I do have moulds and things like that that I've made paper clay with before but I thought I would make some Halloween embellishments. So I'm just rolling it out, um, I'm wanting it to be probably about two three millimeters thick so quite thin and the little blue chucks cloth that you see has actually got baby powder in it and that's helps it not stick that first one um, didn't work so I'll start that again um, rolling out again so I decided to use some foam stamps now these foam stamps I have made and I've done a video on them um, but that'll be up after this one I had the idea of there goes my phone every time I start a voiceover there goes my phone so I thought by putting this stamp in the ink it would release from the paper clay but it didn't so I had to dust it with the baby powder and that's what's in the little blue pouchy cloth things just um, baby powder and it stops the clay from sticking so I decided to make some clay eyes so this is a stamp I got from Aliexpress and I cut foam from the die and mounted it on a bit of chipboard and cut around it and have been using them in stamps in my projects and also using them now in this paper clay so I really love how these turned out something different and I'm going to use these in my art challenge I still have loads of paper clay left I use probably about one and a half small packets and I've got probably about 10 times the amount of clay to use up still so I may bring you some more videos of making different things with clay yes I know you can pop it into molds and you can pop it into different things but I like to make as I said different things out of it so this clay is also from Aliexpress and so is that clear acetate um, or clear roller but I did purchase this hmm, trying to think possibly four years ago it could be that old so just trying to roll it out, rolling it out on some baking paper so it doesn't stick to my table and flipping it over every couple of rolls to stop it from being sticky. And I'm using a fair bit of baby powder and I'm actually out of baby powder at the moment so I do need to purchase some more for the next lot. But putting the baby powder in that blue little chucks cloth comes out very very thin and very fine. So I decided I want to try a skeleton and that didn't work so well. I found some stamps worked better than others. So I found stamps with more larger areas worked better than smaller stamps with smaller areas. So we decided not to do the skeletons again. And I apologise if you can hear a little bit of noise in the background. It is my, it is Alexis, my cohort on this channel. She's got a bit of a cough at the moment and she's in bed coughing. So that one didn't work either. As I said, some stamps work better than others. So a bit of trial and error. So all these stamps that you see me using, I just cut uh, um, kids' foam, kids' fun foam, cut out of the AliExpress dies. And if you'd like any links to the dies, particular dies I've used or helped finding in my AliExpress, just let me know, and I'll be happy to pop. Um, happy to send you the links. But usually, if you type in Halloween dies, they'll come up. So again, I tried this one. And no, actually, I decided the pumpkin because the pumpkin had lots of sort of open areas where the clay could push into, and I love how the pumpkin turned out. So, just making sure I've got loads of powder on the stamp so it doesn't stick to the clay. And you can see how I'm getting the reverse picture from the pumpkin. I'm actually thinking it'd be really cool to do some more die cutting out of the foam and actually use all the little pieces to reconstruct a pumpkin and then I'll get the negative effect so I may do that as well. So you can do so much with foam stamps and there I stamp an eyeball on the side again. So this clay I had to put aside and um, let it dry for about 24 hours until it was um, 
dry and I do apologize if you can hear Alexis in the background she's got a terrible cough at the moment poor darling seems to get worse at night but we're at the doctor's today and she's on some medicine so she's getting there so you can see I'm just pulling some harder bits out of the clay so probably about 70% of the clay was good in the bag but just where there was a few air pockets in the bag it had dried out so just rolling out the third part and giving everything good old dust with that baby powder I ended up with baby powder everywhere but that's okay because it stopped everything from sticking. So this particular one I try a few different stamps just to get some variety. So this one worked quite well with the glasses and the bats. Again it had large areas of foam and then large areas of space which was really good. So I'm assuming you'll probably do this with, maybe I'll try this again with some um, rubber stamps I've got. Just a bit of trial and error, what works and what doesn't work. So I decided to make a couple of frames, I only did two of those because they were quite large and I couldn't get as a nice impression around the edges as I liked. Here's a wobbling table. I am working on a trestle table and it's giving a bit on in the market for a new scrap desk. So the great thing about paper clay, if you do goof it up or stuff it up, you can actually just roll it out again and start all over again. Just trying to pick it out of the foam shapes in the smaller areas. Some of the smaller areas didn't come out, or some of the paper clay in the um, foam stamp didn't come out, but once it dried, I was able to just flick it out with a point of a needle, which was very, very handy. So I made this video in two parts. So the next part you'll see is after they are dry. So I left it a good probably three or four days to dry, but 24 hours would be sufficient. I just do get back to it in time. So I'm just showing you some of the pieces. So they do dry, um, need to be dried on a flat surface. So here we are, they're back, they're dry. Different camera setup, I've made myself a new tripod, which the video is coming for that soon. And I do apologize if it is zooming in, zooming out, my camera is still getting um, used to the Uh, new overhead camera. So I tried to colour them with some alcohol sprays that I've made from Sharpie markers and one also is a glimmer spray from Lindy Stamp Gang but most of this gets covered up because it doesn't it's not giving the the look that I wanted I don't know what look I wanted but I did I did want some um, I did want some colour on the paper clay So there I'm just showing you some rub and buff in the silver colour. That I decided to rub onto the crevices and mainly the pieces that are sticking up to give them a bit more colour. So when you put rub and buff on it's sort of when you rub your fingers across it and it's great to do it with your fingers. Um, apply it with your fingers you're just catching the top surface then I decided well the the sprays weren't working I thought I'd go with these watercolors so these are Mikador watercolors that I got from Spotlight for about three dollars fifty over 12 months ago now so as you can see I've still got a fair bit of them left so I've decided to use three colors of each shade so the pink and the green and sort of give them a bit of, bit of dimension I was hoping the watercolour would pool a little in the paper clay, but it tends to dry really, really flat. So just using a water brush to apply the watercolour, I'm not actually using the water brush as a brush as it's intended. The water brush has a barrel of water in it, which is quite dirty in this particular brush. Um, so just using it as a paintbrush 
just trying to just um, dry off the colours. So I can move on to the other ones. So I go back and add some watercolour to the one that I um, sprayed with the alcoholic inks and the Lindy Stampkin inks because they just weren't spooky enough, I think. Um, I wanted sort of quite a dark colour versus quite a light colour for the eyes. So then I decided to move on to the pumpkins. So the pumpkins, I tried to put a bit of darker orange around the edge and give them a bit of sort of lighter yellowy orange in the middle. With the pumpkins, I am putting the colour in the grooves and on the top. And I will show you when I do it later the effect that I really love with these pumpkins. So adding a bit of green as well, because not all pumpkins are yellow. Some of them are green. Sorry, not all pumpkins are orange. Some of them are a bit green as well. So this one I try to put black on the face of the jack-o'-lantern, but it doesn't work as well as I anticipated, so I do change that in a minute. So this was all about experimenting. Um, I didn't know whether the paper clay would work being rolled out flat and being stamped into. I didn't know whether the colours would work on top of it. But as you can see at the end, I've put some still photos and I'm really impressed with the embellishments that I've um, made. And I've used up some, so there I go and block the black and make it even worse. <laughs> So I've made some embellishments to pop in my Halloween pile, to hand out in Happy Mail, to use in my projects, and it used up some paper clay that I had hanging around. So just going through, and this is my green pumpkin that I decided to do. So these paints worked really well. What I forgot to say before I started painting is I gave them a bit of a wipe with a damp cloth, just not very, not sopping wet, but just damp, just to remove all the baby powder, because there was a bit of, quite a bit of baby powder, or quite a bit of powder on the surface of the paper clay, and if the um, watercolours or the mists pick up the baby powder, um, it wouldn't have been very good. So I did forgot to say that in the first part of it. There's a couple of eyeballs, trying to give it a dry in between. Dried really quickly actually with the paper clay because some of the colour, I thought it would soak into the paper clay and it more sat on top, which was um, better. So this particular pumpkin, I didn't like the face, so I thought I would cover it entirely in black. So here I bring in some rub and buff, so I'm using the same silver rub and buff again and I do like the effect of that on the black pumpkin. So just rubbing with my finger and it just catches the raised up images so it doesn't coat everything. So this is the one with the two frames on it, so I just decided to paint over the frames and a couple of, what do I have on the, oh the, um, the glasses with the bat and a couple of eyeballs as well. So I decided to do one of the frames black just to make it a bit more spooky. And there goes Alexis again. I'm sorry if you can hear her coughing. She's not having a good time of it at the moment. She doesn't cough much during the day, but then you put her to bed at night and she'll cough all night till the magic hour of about four o'clock in the morning. And then she seems to stop and go to sleep. <laughs> oh, funny games being a parent. Anyone that's a parent that's listening to this is nodding their head and going, yep, we remember those days. So just trying to add a bit more definition into the glasses with the bats. And playing with the different colours. So these color, uh, these um, watercolors worked really well for this particular project. Any watercolors I'd probably use. I could have used acrylic paint, but I wanted something that was a bit more translucent, not, not, not so much opaque. So now I decide to fussy cut them out. 
Um, they're quite easy to fussy cut. I'm using some Tim Holtz um, heavy art, heavy um, duty scissors. I'm not sure what they're called. They're by Tonic Studio. Um, and go ahead and fussy cut all those out. And then I had the idea is to take my black ink pad and actually ink over the top of some of the raised areas to make them a bit more spooky. And I do like that. So I do go off camera and fussy cut the rest of them out. It was quite easy. Um, it was quite soft, the clay to cut. And it was like just cutting a thicker piece of paper. So those Tim Holtz scissors and any good scissors would chomp straight through them. So just hand cutting around. Um, they're not all even and not all perfect. That's not what I was going for. So I do go off and finish that off camera because I thought that's a bit boring watching me sit there and cut them all out. Magic of television. They're all back. So I love that particular um, pumpkin. So here I decide I've got my Tim Holtz... Um, archival ink pad and I'm just rubbing it all over the top of the colour and I love how these pumpkins turned out with the black on the top and the orange underneath. So using that rub and buff again to add some more colour or add some more grey to them, I decided to do the rub and buff on a lot of the projects and then I go over with the ink pad as well on some of them. So I give some of them um, a lot of treatment. I love this particular frame with the pink or pinky purple and the black. It just looks really, really spooky. And that frame would be fun to cut out and then put something else behind it as well. Or mount um, a lady's face in the middle of it. So I'll take this opportunity when I'm just finishing up this to thank all our new subscribers for coming on. We've had a flurry on in the last few days, which is fantastic. I'm so enjoying Spooktober and I've been creating like mad. And I've got loads of videos coming um, between now and the end of September. Uh, next September, what month are we? October. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't know what month we're in at the moment. Very sleep deprived and very tired. So just finishing up um, inking. I love the way the ink turned out. So just finishing up inking um, as many of the shapes as I wanted. And I can't wait to make a couple of cards with those. So that may be one of the next projects I do is turn them into some cards or tags for my projects. So if you haven't already, we'd love if you subscribe. As I said, my daughter and I share this channel, so we do a lot of crafty stuff. We do hauls, we do happy mail, we do unboxings. We're going to attempt to do some vloggish type things out and about, which I'm getting a bit more confidence to do. Here I'm umming and ahhing whether I want to blacken the last pumpkin. I'm being a bit indecisive. So we're going to do a bit more vlog style while we're going out and shopping as well. So quite a mixture on this channel. I do apologise for the rocking of the table. I was scrubbing quite hard and this is probably not the best use of your ink pad but it is quite old and probably needing a new ink pad. Awesome re inker with this one. So I also go around some of the shapes as well just to take off the white around the edges. So I've put some still photos here at the end. In a couple of seconds they'll come up so you can see some close-ups of them. So thank you for watching, and we'll catch you again in Spooktober. Bye for now.